feature. Windows Live Movie Maker. You want me to do a tutorial featuring Windows Live Movie Maker? No, oh, sorry, that is not going to happen. There is nothing on this planet that would induce me to do a tutorial featuring Windows Live Movie Maker. It's not going to happen. Oh, oh, the live version of Windows. Of course, yes. Well, now you've explained it properly. Yes, of course I can. It's here. The first thing we need to do is get hold of some background graphics and music. And a Google search for copyright free music and video loops should throw up plenty of options. For this tutorial, I shall be using the free loops provided by movietools.info. And if you want to do the same, then you can find the link in the description below. So here we are on the front page of movietools.info and straight away here's a loop I like the look of. And a quick click with the mouse takes me to the download page for this particular loop. And as you can see, I'm given a choice of downloading it as a Windows media file or a QuickTime file. Now as I'm running Windows, I'm going to go for the Windows file. A quick click and there it is downloading. And it's finished, so I'll just drag it across to my desktop like this. So that's the background sorted. And now for the music. This time, I'm going to use some of the free music that's available on Media Channel's own site. And the link for this is also in the description below. So here we are on the front page. And I'll just click on the Copyright Free Music tab. The track I want to use is called Warriors. And here it is. Now to download the file, I need to right click with my mouse, choose Save Link As, and then tell it where to download the file. In this case, to my desktop. Then click Save, and there it is downloading. So, now we've got our background loop and our music, let's do something with them. Open Live Movie Maker, and before you start, just click on the Project tab and make sure that you have the correct aspect ratio for your video selected. The one I need is widescreen. So quick click and I'm good to go. Now we need to import our clips. I could do this by clicking here and browsing as requested, but as both my clips are on my desktop, I'm just going to use the easier and quicker method of just dragging them in like this. So here's our video loop. And if we want to see it play, we just click the play button here and we can see it on the preview screen above. As you can see, the clip starts quite abruptly. So let's use a visual effect to ease it in. So put the cursor back at the beginning and click on Animations. Now that looks interesting. So let's hover over Blur through Black and see what it looks like. It looks good. So double click and it's automatically applied to our clip. And if we now play the edit, we can see how the changes look. Very nice. If we now check out the end of the clip, we can see that it also ends rather abruptly. So let's soften that as well. Click on Visual Effects and let's see what we've got. Ah, now the fade out to black looks good, so double click to add it to the clip. And there we have it. A nice fade in and a nice fade out to boot. OK, time to bring in the music, which again I'll do by dragging it into place and I'll place it at the beginning of the clip like this. As you can see, Movie Maker has automatically cut the length of the music to match the length of the clip, which is nice. But if we play the clip, we will hear that although the music starts nicely, because it has been cut, it ends rather abruptly. To fix this, select Edit, then Music Tools, and over here, next to the volume control, you will find the fade in and fade out controls. The fade in we don't need, as there's already a fade on the music. So just click on fade out and let's choose a slow one. Now, if we play the clip, we can hear a nice volume fade out. Excellent. Now let's add some lettering. Click on the home tab again. And here you will see three options, title, which will add text before your clip starts, credits, which will add text after your clip is finished, and caption, which will add text over your clip. And this is the one we want. But before you click it, make sure that the cursor is at the place that you want the caption to begin. In this case, the beginning of the clip. Now double click caption, 
and you will notice that it has automatically been moved to the end of the opening fade, which is quite nice. A text box also appears on the preview screen, and this is where we can enter the intro title. In this case, it's Mega Productions. If we run the edits, we can see that the title is a little bit small and weedy. So let's fix that by highlighting the text and altering it with the font tools here. I'll click on the size box and choose the 72 point size. And I'll just have to adjust the box size a bit here to accommodate the bigger text. And I'll also just fine tune the position so that the title straddles that white glowy bit in the middle of the clip. There. Now let's see what it looks like. Not bad, but I think it could benefit from a chunkier font. So let's go back up to the font tool and choose something fancier. Yeah. Napa Heavy looks good, so we'll select that. And because the text has changed, you may have to fine tune the positioning again. And let's see how that looks. Good. But I think we could still beef up the text a little bit more. So click here to change the font colour. Yellow should go well. And how about an outline to help pick it out from the background? So over to the outline tool here, and I'll choose a nice thick one like this. And there it is. I'm not keen on the outline's colour though. So over to the outline tool colour selector here, and I think a nice strong orange would go well. Oh yes, that's much better. When we play our edit, however, we can see that the text disappears just after the middle of the clip. We need it to last a bit longer than that, so click on the text timeline here and open the caption controls again. In this section here, find a text duration control. Now our clip is just over 10 seconds long, so the nearest option we have got is 10 seconds. So click on that and our text timeline expands to join the length of the clip. So let's run the edit. Yes, it looks nice, but it doesn't really do much. So let's go to the effects section here and see what's on offer. Again, by resting our cursor on the effects, we can see an example of how it will look on the preview screen. And as you can see, there's plenty of different ones to choose from. I quite like this zoom in big effect, so I'll double click to select it. And a quick check on the preview screen to confirm that all is well. And yes, that looks fine. Now, all that's left to do is to render the edit onto a video. Over here, you will find plenty of preset options for uploading to places like YouTube, Facebook, etc. But I want to render it into the highest definition I can. So I'm going to click on Save Movie instead. And then I'm going to select for the High Definition Display option. I'll choose my desktop for the file's destination and name it as my intro, and I'd like it rendered as a Windows Media Video, or WMV file. Now it's just a matter of clicking save, waiting until it renders into a video, and this is what you get. So there you go, that is how you do it. That is how you make a cool intro using Windows Live Movie Maker. And you know you don't have to follow it slavishly, step by step. Experiment with it, change a few things, see what you can come up with. Because you can't break the program by getting things wrong. All you've got to do is start again. And who knows, you may come up with something fantastic and phenomenal. Oh yes. Well, that's all from me for this episode, but I'll see you here next time on the Media Channel. Yeah.